Hey guys, it's Brett from Prepared Man. I want to check in with you real quick and do a quick review on a knife I picked up a couple of months ago. The American Trade Knife from Clinton Armstrong at Deer Creek Wilderness Outfitters. Like I said, I picked this knife up early. This is actually the prototype. It's made out of high carbon steel. I've carried this knife for a couple of months. I've beat and banged on it and I think I've got a really true review of the knife itself. So let's pull in, we'll do some quick specs over top of the knife and, and talk about just what makes up the American Trade Knife. Then we'll do a couple of tests and I'll show you it in action. Stick with me. This is the knife itself and I've just set it up on my bench. Uh, the knife itself is 1095 high carbon steel. It's been differentially hardened with a Rockwell hardness of 59 or 61 on the edge and 51 through 53 on the spines. It's got nice cherry scales that really hug your hand. It's about an inch and a half wide across the blade, and the blade itself, the overall length, is about five inches long. It's got a four and a half inch handle. It's got a nice lanyard hole, which is actually one of my key features for a good survival knife. A Scandivex edge, a really nice steep Scandivex, which I've actually probably modified a little bit just by sharpening. A brushed metal finish, and mine's actually been polished, and it can be forced patina on the release that he's giving. So this knife is a really cool little knife to me. Another little thing that I didn't point out is if you look on the back, mine has jimping. I think you can get this knife without jimping as well. Now I've carried this knife a lot. This knife, as you can see, you can see the wear on my blade probably if it's not for the sun. My knife's been polished, but this knife is, it comes in a sandblasted finish, a bead blasted finish or a brushed finish I guess I should say and it also comes in an optional patina I'm probably going to patina this knife just because the way I treated it needs a patina but uh, the knife itself can do a lot of work let's set up we're going to get some wood up here because I see all these tests of people showing knives cutting paper and that's great I'm glad they can cut paper but I've never came across a piece of paper in the woods that I couldn't just tear so let's reset the camera we'll set up and make some feather sticks and just show you what this knife's all about. Okay, guys, I've just got a uh, little limb out of the sugar maple here in my yard, and I'm just going to do a quick feather stick to show you what it's about. This knife gives you a lot of control. I really like the jimping on my knife myself, but just as far as control, it's unsurpassed. The blade is so easy to sharpen and touch up on my release item. This is the prototype here, but I mean, it's the same quality. Clinton makes them all himself. So this knife is just so good at, at really getting in there. If I want to just go ahead and get in a hurry and lop this off, there's enough heft to this knife that I can just lop those sticks off and not really worry about it. Nice, clean cut. I can come back in. I can notch the stick in the back because the nimbleness of this blade, where it's just an inch and a half wide, it really lets me cut in and make a notch. And believe me, it lets you make a notch because about four or five days after I got this knife, I made a nice notch myself accidentally with this knife. Now, this piece of wood right here is probably mm, 110 years old or something like that. It's out of an old barn that I just tore down. And I can just process this wood as well. Even though it's been seasoned extremely well, I can get right in there and process and not just feather stick, but I can plane this wood as well. I could work this flat if I needed to with this knife very well. The point is very solid. I could baton with this knife. I don't baton with my knives, but I could. This knife's a very solid knife. It's a tank. One other feature that I'd like to point out because I didn't take a chance and point it out just a minute ago is Clinton actually provides these nice leather sheaths. Now I'm a lefty, so he made this sheath just for me. It's a nice lefty sheath, solid leather, really nice solid sheath. It doesn't have a fire steel loop, but that's okay. I mean, that's just a fad in the bushcraft community, really, to carry your fire steel on your knife. And it's great. If you lost everything else, you'd have the ability to make fire, and you'd have your knife. But if you carry a belt pouch or you carry a fire kit, that's where your ferro rod typically is, and that's where mine is. I just carry a knife here. In my little belt pouch, I carry something to touch it up like a ceramic rod, and, and that's how I go. Now, this is the American Trade Knife from Deer Creek Wilderness Outfitters. I think it's an excellent buy. I own a lot of knives, and I've owned a lot more knives. I've owned almost every bushcraft option that Blind Horse Knives had to offer when they were open. I've owned a number 
of moras and still do on the ever expanding collection of moras and I'm not going to turn my back on the moras they're a great knife but if you want a nice knife with some style and some real function this is the way to go I'm Brett the Prepared Man stay safe